<laughs> What's up, dudes? I'm back with another video. Um, yes, it's Halloween season, uh, the best time of year. You get to watch all your favourite horror movies, and in this case, listen to all your best spooky metal albums or albums that give me that real Halloween vibe. Uh, so today I'm going to be running through some of those, talking about the albums themselves and explaining to you why you should listen to them around this fantastic season that is Halloween. My first recommendation is the incredible horror punk album by The Misfits, Famous Monsters. So the original Misfits disbanded in 1983. In 1995, Doyle and Jerry were looking to reform the band. They did approach the original lead singer, Glenn Danzig, but he declined at the time and had no interest in returning. So the band held auditions for a new singer, and this is where they found Michael Graves, who had performed vocals on their two albums during this period, American Psycho, and this album we're talking about, Famous Monsters. This album just screams Halloween from the amazing cover, from the first song to the final song. This is a horror dream and the pinnacle of the Graves era. From catchy vocal lines to huge riffs, thumping bass and insane punk drums, songs based on classic sci-fi and horror, this album has it all. Absolute bangers like Dust to Dust, Scream and Saturday Night. The music video for the song Scream had the classic horror director George Romero behind the camera, which just solidifies the band's status within pop culture and their links to the horror world. This album perfectly summed up with two sets of lyrics from the album. From Helena, if I cut off your arms and cut off your legs, would you still love me anyway? And from Saturday night, I'm sitting here in the bedroom where we used to smoke cigarettes and now I'm watching you die. This is a must listen during Halloween season, a stellar album that's full of horror and always requires a spin in October. My next recommendation is Marilyn Manson's Hollywood. This album is a semi-autobiographical album as Marilyn Manson believed he was being blamed for things at the time that were out of his control. In the aftermath of the Columbine High School massacre on April 20th, 1999, national news media reported that the perpetrators were wearing Marilyn Manson t-shirts during the rampage and had been influenced by his music music, both of which were untrue. While it can be viewed on several levels, it's said that the simplest interpretation is to see it as a story of an idealistic man whose revolution is commercialised, leading him to destroy the thing that he has created, which is himself. It takes place in a thinly veiled satire of America called Hollywood, where dead celebrities are revered as saints and John F. Kennedy is idolised as the contemporary Jesus Christ. It's an epic return to the more industrial roots that made the band amazing in the first place. Um, as a previous album, Mechanical Animals leaned more towards the glam rock style. This album really begins, you know, with the sound of someone spinning a revolver cylinder and just giving you that really, really weird sense of dread as the album starts out. It's the perfect tone setup for the incredible album that it is. Uh, it's packed with some of Manson's best work from ideas to execution and it's definitely a recommendation from me to listen to this Halloween season. Did you know that I now have a Patreon? That's right, you can help support me and the channel over on Patreon by becoming a member. And um, There's loads of extra perks. You get loads of unseen footage, loads of unseen vlogs. Some of the stuff I have now taken off of YouTube and is now only on my Patreon. Um, you'll get updates, videos before they're released and mentioned in every video as well. So yeah, come over, help me out. Um, every single penny will go back into this channel itself, helping me to go to festivals and just to make some absolutely amazing content for you guys. So yeah, come over to Patreon and give me some love. My next recommendation is the incredibly dark album from Typo Negative, World Coming Down. They're not known for being an upbeat band by any stretch of the means, um, but Typo Negative's excellent sense of humour is often overlooked on a lot of their albums. Well Coming Down does have some of these qualities, but it's a very dark album, being written at a time in singer Peter Steele's life where he was dealing with a series of deaths in his family including interludes that represent the three internal organs, sinus, liver and lungs. These named due to certain substances that the band were consuming at the time. Uh, the album paints a horrific picture of an internal struggle mixed with the type O sensibility. 
There is a song on this album specifically dedicated to Halloween, the track All Hallows Eve. Uh, so it's fitting, obviously, for today's subject. Uh, this is a beautifully haunting album that needs a listen around this time. Bathe yourself in green light and enjoy. The next album I'm going to recommend for Halloween is the absolutely bonkers Midian by Cradle of Filth. Based on the Clive Barker novel Cabal, in which a teenager that suffers from a suspected mental disorder is told by his psychiatrist uh, that he has committed a series of murders, uh, Midian is the name of a semi-mythical city uh, where he must search for the answers. This is hands down the most evil cradle album from start to finish it's bombardment of death goth metal lots of haunting synths and danny filth's insane vocals take this album literally over the edge like the previous album cruelty and the beast midian features a guest narrator this time doug bradley best known for playing pinhead in the hellraiser series bradley's line Oh No Tears Please from the song Her Ghost in the Fog is a quote from Pinhead's first movie as Hellraiser. No tears please, it's a good waste of suffering. This is flawless coffin fodder and will bring you one step closer to insanity. This album is just 100% go constantly. I dare you to put the track Satanic Mantra on and sit in a dark room without bricking it. Okay, next up in my recommendations is Ghost's amazing second album, Infest Tissue Mom. Now, if you want to know what Infest Tissue Mom means, it's a Latin adjective meaning very or most hostile. As told on Ghost's first album, this one continues from the Antichrist to birth onwards as that was the story in the first album. In an interview with the band they said that everything on the first record was about the coming darkness uh, and impending doom whereas this record deals with more the presence of the Antichrist. Uh, but subliminally the meaning of it is more how mankind predominantly men, um, and what they have deemed to be the presence of the devil. Um, this album has some of Ghost's darkest moments. Uh, I mean, they are beautiful as well as dark. It's drowning in synths and organs, really gives the album a weird, spooky feel. Um, I do think as well that this album has one of the best endings. Uh, the song Monstrous Clock where the album just fades out on Come Together, Together as One, Come Together for Lucifer's Son. That just always gives me chills. I remember um, watching them at Download 2013 when they finished with that track. And my God, to this day still, even now talking about it, it's giving me some chills. So how can you not have a Halloween season without this incredible ghost album to give you all the chills? My next recommendation is the insane glam horror album that is Murder Dolls Beyond the Valley of the Murder Dolls. It's hard to explain this album to anyone without listening to it, but imagine if Motley Crue had a baby with the Misfits uh, and then they were adopted by Alice Cooper. The brainchild of Wednesday 13, who himself is a massive fan of horror, uh, which would pretty much be the basis for his entire career going forward. Bringing in then Slipknot drummer Joey Jordison to play guitar was a bold move, uh, but in this case it really worked to amazing results. A lot of the songs were from the original incarnation of the band, Manic Spider Trash and Frankenstein Drag Queens from Planet 13, which gives you some semblance of what you're in for. The album is packed full of horrific lyrics and B-movie references that will make any horror fan gush. A lot of the lyrical content is tongue in cheek. Uh, like Topo Negative that I previously mentioned, the black humour is lost on a lot of people, uh, but it's a treat on songs like A Love and First Fright and Grave Robin USA. Overall, this is an amazing horror listen and demands your attention this time of the year. And my final recommendation is the incredible album that is Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe. Tons of old horror movie samples, some incredible industrial metal, and some random drums from Tommy Lee. Um, what else could you want from this album already? Um, Hellbilly Deluxe turns the monster of the week into audio form. Rob Zombie has created an entire 
persona to engulf himself in uh, with his band. Similar to what Marilyn Manson had done, a larger than life caricature of horror and uh, maybe a little dash of themselves in there as well. Um, references to movies such as Madhouse, City of the Dead and Last House on the Left. Uh, it even has the Monsters TV series um, featured in it as well. Of course, the cart in that show known as Dragula. Uh, of course, we didn't know this, but Rob Zombie would end up making his own version of the Monsters nearly 20 years later, which is actually pretty crazy. At the time, Walmart refused to carry the album in the States due to the pentagram on the cover, which was covered up and edited into an X later down the line. This album is literally a must listen to for fans of Halloween and horror alike, containing some of his most classic songs, Dragula and Living Dead Girl. Every single one is a banger. Go and give it a spin. You will not regret it. Yeah, so there you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I really enjoyed doing this, listening back to those albums. I mean, these are albums I listen to on the regular, but it's always good around this time to listen to them to get you into the spooky season. Um, thank you very much to my Patreons that will be listed here. Love you guys. Thank you very much for supporting. Again, if you want to do that, come over to Patreon. Um, and yeah, join up because it's a whole lot of fun. Thank you very much for watching as always. And I shall see you dudes in the next video. Rawr. You should go and subscribe to my channel, just because, come on, subscribe.